Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be looking at a hypothetical scenario 4 billion years from now when Andromeda Galaxy and the Milky Way Galaxy actually collide with each other and we're going to imagine what would actually happen if one of these stars inside the Andromeda Galaxy actually collides with our own Sun. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is a simulation of what will happen about 4 billion years from now. These two galaxies will actually combine into one large mega galaxy. And this is what we believe uh, based on the observations of the motion of uh, Andromeda toward us. It's basically kind of moving toward us relatively fast. Now, today we're going to take a look at a hypothetical solar system, basically 4 billion years in the future, when our sun is about 8.6 billion years old. Now, the thing is, it's not going to change very much. It's going to be just a little bit less massive, not by much, but um, it will not actually will have changed into a red giant just yet. So at this point, uh, the solar system might actually not really be that different. As a matter of fact, it might be very, very similar to how it is today. And when the Andromeda galaxy actually kind of collides with this, our own galaxy, the chance for a, a star collision is super, super low. As a matter of fact, it's most likely that none of the stars will actually collide with each other. They will definitely come close to each other. They might even disturb each other's planetary systems. But a direct face-to-face -face collision is extremely, extremely low. Even though there is trillions of stars passing by each other, simply because the space between stars is very large. But we're going to imagine that one of such stars actually does collide with the Sun, and let's actually observe the effects that it has on our solar system. The highest chance for collision is from a red dwarf, basically a star similar to, for example, Proxima Centauri, which is the closest star to us. And so for this reason, we're actually going to be launching Proxima Centauri-like star toward us, or exactly into our sun. Now, you may have already kind of imagined what will probably happen, but I'm going to actually slow down the time here and show you um, by literally launching this toward us. Now, the speed that is going to be moving at is going to be probably about 300 kilometers per second or even higher. It's going to be a really, really, really fast moving object. And at this point, um, we're going to aim directly at our sun, even though it's very unlikely to actually um, happen. But let's imagine that one of such objects does basically head right toward our sun. So there is this Andromeda star that's going to be headed toward um, our own sun. It's moving at just over 300 kilometers per second. And it's probably going to take it just a few days to get and collide with our sun. So we're going to accelerate time, but we also are going to basically be observing things from maybe this perspective, just so that we can actually see everything. Now, take a guess on what's going to happen. And the science behind this is actually pretty straightforward. And if you haven't guessed what's going to happen, uh, I'm going to give you a hint. So um, the sun is about one mass of sun and Andromeda star, I actually changed it a little bit. I made it about 0.4 masses of sun just so that when they actually combine, they reach what's known as the Chandrasekhar limit, which is the limit for a white dwarf uh, to basically uh, lose its ability to maintain itself and to explode. And so this is what we're actually aiming for, because it's very likely that if two stars collide during the Andromeda Milky Way collision, there's going to be, of course, our favorite event, which you're about to see in a few seconds. So here comes the Andromeda star. Let's actually zoom in to it as it approaches our um, sun. And because its mass is actually a lot less than our, the mass of our sun, it's not really going to influence any of the planets very much until the last few moments. And because it's moving so fast, uh, even if it didn't collide with the sun, their orbits would shift, but not a lot. They would shift enough to basically influence the climate on those planets, but not much would change if it doesn't collide with the sun. 
but it just so happens that it will be colliding with the sun and uh, we're going to pause the game right before it happens because I actually want to show you something else here. So first of all, um, let's go to Earth for a second and let's actually observe what all of this looks like from planet Earth by also removing trails here. So we actually have two stars in, in our night skies now. And obviously the temperature will have increased just a little bit uh, from what it was before. But because this is a red dwarf, it will uh, not really provide enough heat to make our temperature any warmer than it currently is. It might actually increase by about 2 to 5%, but not much more. But here we go. Let's uh, decelerate time here a little bit. Let's change this to maybe several minutes per second. And here comes the big collision between the stars. Three, two, one. And there goes that supernova. So we're going to zoom into Earth once again. And so this is kind of what it is going to look like from our planet Earth. This is actually kind of in real time right now. We're going to accelerate time just so it happens a little bit quicker. This is what it would look like from the planet as you see all of this unfold in real time. Notice the temperature is actually increasing quite a lot and pretty quickly. And this is because of all of the tremendous amount of radiation that's now approaching our planet. And it's going to be kind of basically boiling this side completely alive. Uh, so first the atmosphere is going to disappear, then the water is going to boil, and then pretty much the entire surface is going to be covered with uh, essentially boiling and molten materials. The temperature here is increasing like degree per second. Now, by the time that the first shock waves get here, the Earth is already going to be super hot, so people will most likely not be able to handle this, assuming that there's someone living here. This is, of course, 4 billion years in the future. And at this point, this is only a few minutes after the actual collision. The uh, supernova wave is actually going to be hitting ours really, really quickly. It's already absorbed Mercury. It's probably approaching Venus right now. And so within only the first few minutes, when the temperature is already over 50 degrees Celsius, we're now going to be receiving our first uh, super highly charged particles. And here we go. I'm going to actually move the view just so you can see the surface here. And look at that. So the temperature is already at 200 degrees Celsius. Pretty much everything on the surface here is now dead. Uh, the dark side is still kind of okay, but because of our atmosphere that's still kind of there, the uh, rest of the planet will actually start warming up really quickly. And within minutes, it's going to be close to about 1000 degrees Celsius here. And this is when it's going to actually start changing dramatically. So we're now inside of, uh, inside of the supernova shockwave and approaching 4000 degrees Celsius. The planet is now glowing and pretty much everything on, on the planet is now gone. So this is kind of what would hypothetically happen if there was ever a collision with a star, another star most likely from Andromeda Galaxy or really any star that approaches our Sun. But once again, the chance of this happening is so low that you're more likely to win the lottery thousands of times in a row than you are to experience this collision. And so we don't really have much to worry about. In this game though, we do. And as a matter of fact, uh, everyone on the planet is now long gone and dead. Uh, the same will probably happen to other planets, including Jupiter. So we can kind of now look into the charts here just to see how all of the planets will slowly start disappearing one after another. Next one will be Mars then Jupiter, and then Saturn, and so on. Uh, now, interestingly, even though our Sun will one day become a white dwarf, it's still not going to actually go supernova. And for it to go supernova, it has to acquire at least one more mass of Sun when it becomes a white dwarf. It's going to be at a mass of about uh, 0.3 to 0.4 masses of the Sun when it's actually a white dwarf, which means that it's very highly unlikely that 
it's going to basically ever go supernova. It's probably one day going to become a black dwarf, but that's that's another story for another day. Well, it looks like uh, some of the planets actually did survive. Their temperature is very high though. It's 26 degrees, 26,000 degrees Celsius. So I'm actually kind of surprised that they're still around. Uh, but if you were to zoom out of all of this and kind of take a look at our solar system from the outskirts, this is what people from other, or I guess aliens from other planets would see. This beautiful supernova expanding and destroying the entire solar system. So that's kind of what would happen. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about our solar system and about the collision that will happen in 4 billion years with the Andromeda galaxy. But once again, the actual stars will probably not collide. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and subscribe if you still haven't. And maybe share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.